Hey, thanks for tuning in to the show. This video is from our live show exclusive on odds.com. If you want to see the entire thing, make sure you click the link below. Head on over to odds.com, check it out, and let's make that cash. Our next fight, Julian Marquez taking on Sparaback Sephirov. And this is a fight that has me twisted. It has got me in knots on this one. Julian Marquez is coming off of a two-year layoff. It's been a long time since we have seen this guy. And it's not the good kind of layoff where I'm like, oh, he's been training. Oh, he's been working on his game. And they, No, 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 no. This guy got into a really – he had a bad injury that kept him sidelined for like a year and a half. He likes to brawl. Dude's got heavy hands. I really like what Marquez brings to the table. He's always going to be a fun guy to watch. He's coming from Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series, and he derailed the hype train that was Phil Hawes in a big way. Knocked him out cold on Dana White's Contender Series a while ago. He likes to double up on his jab. He's got a really heavy right hand. And he's another one of these fighters that's extremely patient when he hurts his opponent. He'll play the game, he'll sit back, and he'll wait for the knockout to present itself when he's uh, when he's got somebody hurt. The thing that I like about him is that he's incredibly durable. So even though he likes to get into a war, he likes to get into a brawl, he doesn't go down. He's not easy to take out of there. And he's training with my man, James Krause. James Krause is a much better trainer than he is a fighter. Even though he's a phenomenal fighter, I like everything that he does. And I like backing the people that he gets into the cage because he's very intelligent with the way he approaches the fights. So good mark there for Julian Marquez. Saprabek Safarov, however, is a master of sport in wrestling and combat sambo. He's one of these killer be killed fighters. I mean, this is a guy who comes in here and he looks to take you out before you can get him out of there. He's only been to one decision his entire career. Just one. He has big telegraphed overhands. He comes in wing and hooks, literally puts his head down. Not kidding. Watch the tape. Dude does this. That's how, that's how this guy fights. So he is there to be hit. However, however, he is shooting for his life. Dude tries to get in there on takedowns and absolutely has to get the fight to the ground. If he gets you to the ground, you are probably in trouble. He knows what he's doing down there. Solid wrestler, good submission artist. He has heavy, vicious ground and pound. The only problem is I don't like what I see on the feet. This is a guy who's been knocked out by Gian Vellante. Red flag, big red flag. And even though he knows what he's doing on the mat, he has been submitted twice already in the UFC. This is a fight where I can't trust either side because Julian Marquez is coming off of such a long layoff, coming off of an injury, even though he's the guy that clearly should be the man that we are looking to back here in this spot. I can't trust him at, what is he, minus 300? Yeah, minus 290, minus 313, minus 301. I mean... The only way I could look to play him at that kind of a, a line would be by knockout. And, you know, maybe that would be possible. We'll see when the props come out a little bit later what that number ends up being. But he'd be a parlay piece, right? But I don't want to trust this guy against a dangerous opponent after a two year layoff in a parlay. This is, it's so funny because after having, you know, our spot last week on Tanner Bozer that kind of shit the bed for everybody and ruined all of our nights. That's the exact same thing we're looking at here with Julian Marquez. And I'm like, I can't trust the guy. And it's probably going to be easy. Like, come Saturday, we're going to watch the fight. And it's going to be like, damn it, man. Mar Marquez blew the brakes off of Zafarov. Where was my bet? I should have bet on Marquez. That's exactly how I'm going to be feeling on Saturday. And I know it. But when you think of this thing and all the questions that are floating around there, hindsight's 2020. You know, come Saturday when we're looking back, it's going to be like, oh, it was easy. We should have bet him. We should have bet him. But right now, it's like there's a lot of questions around what kind of condition this guy's in. And I, I can't trust him at this point with my money. So the pick is going to be Marquez. I'm not parlaying him. Godspeed and good luck to you if you do.